Okay, hi, uh, this is uh, MXUX. Okay, uh, refile update two. Lord's Time Motor says hedge funds may buy up to 400 million of stock. I got this titled Funding Secured. Yai2PN Limited, Cayman Islands, uh, 400 million uh, uh, commitment to buy over a three year period. And that's the total period. It can be more condensed, I think. Uh, receives 35 million shares upon execution of the agreement, subject to the approval of Lordstown shareholders. Shareholders, we have to approve this. Small discount on the shares. I think it's a 3% uh, discount uh, on the shares they're going to get. And um, uh, this is like a line of credit. And again, this has to be approved by the shareholders. But this is like a line of credit to Lordstown is what it is. And they can tap it as needed and sell these guys stock at a slight discount. Uh, existing shareholders are not taking a $400 million worth of dilution. Not at once. Uh, standby commitment when Lordstown needs money. And that's from a professor of business. Anyway, the, the point is... Uh, this firm, why, uh, ya, ya 2 pn Okay, who the heck is that? Anyway, it's the White Knight. They've come to rescue the company. This is a pretty straightforward deal. And let me see if I can expand on this a little bit. Now, this is the first thing that went out. Hedge fund may buy, may buy, uh, okay. It depends. Uh, Lordstown is pretty much in control. They've committed to buy at least uh, 400 million over a period of 36 months uh, at the company's discretion. And then uh, 35 million shares subject to the approval of Lordstown shareholders. And again, small discount of the shares. I believe that's a 3% discount. Uh, I have more information on this. Let's see here. Here is the 8K form that was filed on July 23rd. This doesn't appear on the website anywhere. And I don't want to bore you with all this. Uh, purchase up to 400 million of our Class A common shares uh, at our sole discretion over the approximate 36 month period. So Lordstown is in control of when they're so. Uh, YAH has no right to require us to sell any shares, but YAH is obligated to make the purchase of any we decide they need to buy. There's no upper limit on the price that could be obligated to pay for the uh, common stock, okay? Uh, applicable new purchase agreement. We will not sell your common stock in excess of 335,000. So, what is that? Uh, 35,144,690. Uh, I think that's uh, 15. Uh, ah, here we go, which is a 20% dilution uh, to existing shareholders. But this is in exchange for 400 million of strings, no strings attached cash. Uh, immediately prior to the accession of profit, unless, um, unless we obtain a, a common st approval for more, there's a lot of other things. Uh, the price has to equal or exceed 748 per share, which is what the price was when this was executed. And they've agreed to no own not more than 4.99% of the total outstanding shares. The purchase of the class will be 97% of the simple average of the daily for the three days following the event. Anyway, the point is they're getting a, a discount on the shares. They're limit their uh, ownership below 5%. Uh, it's going to be, a let's say, a 20% dilution of shareholders. Shareholders have to vote it in. It's over a 36-month period. Um, again, 
Lordstown is completely in control when it's sold and how much is sold, and they are obligated to buy it under these terms. So really, what this boils down to is a line of credit for $400 million. I always say all these car companies, they always need $500 million. $400 million is, I believe that makes up the shortfall uh, that they experienced. And I believe this is in addition to the uh, cash they have on hand, which is 500. I don't know. You guys can check that out. But the point is, this should be more than enough, I would think, more than enough cash to get them the production, to get the battery line up, to get the motor line up, to get them into production. They have the chips. The plan is ready. Uh, what they needed was the cash. I said my last, in comments I made on uh, Q's Views video, Q's Views does great videos on Lordstown, that uh, some white knight is gonna see that they can lower production costs with this design. And it's gonna be a, an extremely profitable venture as long as it can get launched. And these guys, uh, this uh, Ya2, Ya2 Pay Cayman Islands, Kind of sounds kind of shaky. We're going to go over that. Uh, these guys are seeing the value here. These are some smart cats. They're seeing the value here. And what's nice is they're not really taking advantage of Lordstown uh, for 3% uh, of the share price. But, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward agreement. It's quite shocking to me, actually. But I believe there's a reason for that as well. But anyway, this seems to be a very good deal for Lordstown. Stockholders have to approve it. I approve it. I, I encourage everybody to approve it. And uh, it's $400 million uh, with a 3%, let's say a 3% interest rate. Which, pff, give me a break, okay? And no debt on the balance sheet. That's the important thing. So we still, you know, there's still room to apply debt if necessary. All right, let's see who this company is. Ya to Pin Limited. Okay, and this is uh, this is Bloomberg Law, and I don't have a subscription, but uh, purchase agreement, 400 millions of Class A stock from time to time at Lordstown's discretion with no upper price limit. Uh, they will not sell in excess of 20% uh, to these guys. Prohibits, uh, uh, prohibits Lordstown from directing purchase, so it limits their ownership, again, to below 5%. Uh, the fund has agreed to not engage in any sort of selling or hedging transactions. So, again, 3% money, uh, stock for cash, Read not to hedge or short uh, in less than 5% ownership. I think this is a great deal for Lordstown at the right time. I think uh, this Ya P, Ya Pin. All right, let's see who this is. Ya Pin is regulated by your same commission, incorporated in the Cayman Islands. I remember when I was doing recruiting, I was doing a search for a medical school in the Cayman Islands. Anyway. Uh, Cayman Islands. Now, this is the business address is Hudson Street, Jersey City. Mm, what's going on there? And here's some documentation. Let's go a little further into this. Uh, this is uh, Jersey City. This is Fun Stock Lookup. Again, uh, Yape is uh, based out of uh, Jersey City and. Uh, 13F, blah, 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 does not appear to be a investment uh, advisor, okay? And they have recent, uh, okay. Private fund data. Now, this is, the Ya Ping is a private uh, investment firm that is managed and I believe owned by Yorkville Advisors. Okay, now Yorkville Advisors are the real money guys behind this. 
is a hedge fund company based in Mountainside. And I believe, guys, this is all pending. I did this research really quick. I do believe it's all correct, but do your own DD. Do not, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is a news broadcast. Anyway, uh, Yorkville Advisors, Yorkville Global is a hedge fund, Mountainside, blah, blah, blah. Less than 150 million in assets under the, and, and operates three private funds. This less than 150 million in assets, I think, is a dodge. I think these private funds have much more. But anyway, you can view information on blah, 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 including private hedge fund, top manager, executives, and contact detail. Again, uh, New Jersey uh, hedge fund. Now, here's uh, just to show you the chain of ownership here. Here's the Ya Ya P. Ya P. Yap is here. Yap, Yap, PN, yeah. Okay, so they got Yah CD, Yah EQ, and Yap. These are the private funds, and these are under the control of the advisors group. So I think this is where all the money is. Uh, no legal issues reported, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is your president and managing partner. Mark Anthony Angelo. Let's remember that name. So what we got is we got Yapi, which is in turn controlled by Yorkville, which is headed by Mark Anthony Angelo. Now let's look into this. Yorkville Advisors, and I'm just putting this up. This is done in Bradstreet. This is just to show you this is a real company. This is not some con job. And... Um, uh, they've got some dubious 17.2 million income. Again, the key principal is Mark Angelo. I, I believe this is all sheltered through these other funds and these private funds, which aren't going to disclose their income and so forth. But anyway, this is to let you know that uh, this is uh, a real thing. And then uh, now I just wanted to show you this is one of the firms that they invested uh, yorkville invested in which is a uh, keto and this is a biotech firm involved in uh, covid 19 testing kits okay uh, low cost testing kits and this is a thing they uh uh 12 million dollars they uh decided to put in here so um anyway and it's a convertible loan and and this is this is one of the things these guys are into is doing these convertible loans and so forth but uh, just to show you they they do invest in other things and again this is a biotech firm uh and there's others you can find a bunch of other examples i think they've invested i've heard saw blurbs that they invested in 70 companies and in, in, including some uh, mj stocks uh, so anyway so, here's their website, Yorkville Advisors, pretty groovy, looks like your typical, uh, you know, what you call site, with the big picture on top, and let's just go into here, I think I like this firm just because they got the pool table, they got the pool table, and the reception you got to love that. Uh, was founded by Mark Angelo, remember that name, in 2001, and it leads a team of professionals, blah, blah, blah. So uh, here's Mark Angelo right here. Uh, he's a Rutgers, a Rutgers guy. Um, I think he studied, uh, well, maybe we'll click on his link here. I think he studied economics. He's got a group of other people here. There's Sharon Martin. There's Jennifer and you see it's a relatively small staff they got here um let's just go in here mark anti uh, served a president and managing member he founded the firm in 2001 and executing financial worth approximately 4 billion 700 companies we're overseeing many aspects of day-to-day, -day, including deal structure, investment decisions. Prior to founding Yorkville, he had senior roles at the May Davis Group and the Boston Group. BA, BA in economics from Rutgers. So, this is Mark Angelo. So, what about Mark Angelo? And 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 let me just tell you, I'm just gonna I read read up a bit on this firm. 
these guys are risk on investors they invest in penny stocks undervalued small cap companies they go in big like they're doing with lordstown and they're looking for obviously you know the 10x 100x return and they are not risk adverse these guys are risk on they're a perfect match uh for lordstown and actually this is a perfect i cannot believe the good fortune i mean this guy is smart enough to see the potential of lordstown and he's willing to loan them this or you know give them this money at three percent just to have this stake and it's going to be a stake of less than five percent under this agreement now whether they can purchase outside of this agreement i'm sure they have other funds that can purchase lordstown stock and so forth but anyway the point is this guy sees the potential okay he know he's they know something okay they see the potential there is so much potential with lordstown because the simplicity of their design and their engineering is so exquisite, exquisite that uh, this is going to be a money-making truck and it's going to be a performing truck. You know, I got to tell you, you got the F-100, you got the Rivian, you got uh, the Cybertruck. These these three trucks, they're weighing in. The Lordstown Motors truck weighs 4,000 pounds, two tons, with the batteries and everything. You know, the, the Cybertruck... Is it going to be one of the heaviest trucks on the road? The, the, the um, F-150 is 9,000 pounds. The RT is, a, is similar. You guys got to understand, when you're talking about trucks, and I don't think people get this, these are straight line driving trucks, okay? If you ever drove a big truck with a big weight like that, I have, you will know you are not, you're not doing... 40 mile an hour turns okay you this is pretty much straight line driving now i know they have all these things and the batteries lower and blah 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 blah. but when you have that much weight around and you look at the f100 uh, f150 and how high that center of gravity is uh the cyber truck you can lower it the rivian again with the very high center of gravity with this very high weight as i said in comments on uh, on other other videos this is going to be driving these trucks are going to be like driving a uh, full cement truck around the f uh, the uh, endurance is a sports truck it's a 600 horsepower all-wheel drive torque vectoring 4,000 pound anybody that knows anything about racing or road racing knows about weight and power ratios anyway this guy understands that he know he, he can see that this is not only going to be a good fleet truck but it's also going to be everybody keeps forgetting this is a consumer truck wait till this thing hits the market wait till these kids start working on this and by the way you can lift the endurance if you want you can lift the f-150 you can lift the rivian because of the drivetrain anyway so let's get this is what i think this is the other reason i think old mark angelo here is into lordstown let's take a look here we got the SEC after Tucker, after Steve Burns, right? And after um, Boardstown. SEC charges formally $1 billion Yorkville Advisors hedge fund with fraud and bogus valuations. So, guess who else is getting a uh, SEC investigation? And what is this? Bogus value, uh, valuations. This is just like the sales figures. This is like a replay of uh, Lordstown Motors, or should I say Tucker. Watch the movie Tucker. You'll see what's going on. Um, the Securities and Exchange Commission charged Mark Angela and his former one of Yorkville advisors with fraud, overvalued assets, and exaggerated returns. Okay? <laughs> All right. Does that sound familiar? A little bit like Steve Burns. Okay? They're what they're accusing him of. And by the way, intent is everything. And what was Steve Burns' intent? He was relaying information. He did... He, okay, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, Yorkville has been a several... Uh, 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 the tactics of... Uh, been a several force articles. Never had a, a down month. Blah, 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 blah. Still, you, you know, again... 
you got the press aligned against these guys, much as like the, the financial press, much as like they are aligned against Lordstown. This guy knows the Lordstown story, okay? Uh, they were all positive until a 33% drop in 2010. Uh, okay, anyway. Here we go. What's this? This is Lordstown. Uh, Yorkville disclosed investors that had provided information to the SEC at the directions of securities and related. Didn't Lordstown just do that? So, this is this is what our man Mark Angelo, providing I have all this information right, which I do believe that I do actually. Uh, anyway, claims Yorkville did not adhere to its own. Uh, ignored negative information, stated valuations, uh, chief financial officer was charged. Does that sound, does that sound familiar? Huh? Uh, the, 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 the CEO and the, C and the CFO are charged. Sound like Lordstown slash Tucker. Um, see the movie Tucker, Francis Ford Coppola. A 35 complaint in Manhattan. Manhattan. No, oh, we love everybody from Manhattan, don't we? They just want to, you know, take all the money from the Midwest. They already ruined all the steel industry there. Now they want to go after manufacturing. Yorkville was one of the biggest hedge funds. Uh, private investments in penny stocks. Okay. Again, I said, these guys are risk on. Okay. They hired a lawyer. Uh, okay, this is Fed loans. Anyway, the point is, uh, the essay claims that into that York for a change valuation policy and blah blah blah. Okay, they they accused them of fraud. All right, continued to value investment in Lowe's furniture at 17 million even after the company had filed bankruptcy. Okay, now these are just like, this sounds like the Hindenburg Report, doesn't it? Uh, and it couldn't be, you know, I ended up in it. All right. Yorkville advises and special purpose vehicles giving us an officer receiving securities and counter ownership. Uh, okay, so this is kind of like uh, the order that uh, Lordstown gave about uh, going concern. So we can see this guy has is, has gone through with his firm exactly what Lordstown is going through with the SEC and with the, the Manhattan District Attorney. Okay, I think this might be one of the keys of why uh, this investment was made. And let's just look at this. Okay, you want to know how this came out? This guy's a crook. This is a crooked operation. Lordstown's crooks. They were, they were working with crooks. All right, let's look at this. How the pursuit of the next Bernie Madoff led to an embarrassing SEC loss. 2018. This ain't that long ago. SEC dismisses all claims against our man. No material evidence of fraud or negligence. No, okay. This sound familiar to anybody? This guy knows this is going to happen to Lordstown too. That's why he's digging in and, and, and okay, security uh, charge head for Yorkville with fraud. Sound familiar? Uh, two executives, a CEO and a CFO, scheming, blah blah blah. Wall Street Journal headlines again. The Wall Street Journal. What did what are, what are they? They put out just before the Fourth of July. They leaked the the. Uh, SEC investigation and the district attorney in Manhattan. You know, you know, Manhattan, I know you think the Midwest is a lot of useless eaters and you're there to harvest the cash out of these old, old Rust Belt companies. But you know what? You're wrong. Uh, New York Times, same thing. Market Watch. Uh, does this all sound familiar? SEC charges with head funds. Okay, we just need Kramer in here. Six years later, six years later, the SEC admitted it had no case. Total fabrication. The SEC declined to discuss the Yorkville case. Six years they put this guy through this, him and his firm. 
because he's doing risk on investing and the investing goes south and they accuse him of fraud. Wow. Look at what, what Lordstown is doing. It's doing a risk on a manufacturing venture. There's no intent to defraud anyone. It's the same thing over and over again with the SEC and the Manhattan District Attorney and the Manhattan legal apparatus. Anyway, had no case. They made him comply with all these orders, produce all this documentation. No case. The press, all over him. No case. Uh, a little too late for York Philip Mark Angelo, our man. It was in the economic interest of a few people to bring this big case with essential engineering and drag it out until they could take advantage of the revolving door. Okay. Different reason. Same thing. You got Amazon, and I'm going to do a video about why Jeff Bezos hates Lordstown, too. Uh, but uh, too little, too late. Economic interest take advantage okay that that's what we're talking about uh so and i don't know what this is aberrational performance inquiry i don't know what that is might want to look that up on your own anyway just in case you don't believe this this is the sec actions website SEC Yorkville advisors to stipulate to dismissal of action against advisor. Court held that either the agency, the, the agency did not have the evidence to support claims or that it had uh, uh, misinterpreted the data. Name of the action prominent hedge fund Angelo and Yorkville registered. Okay. This is the SEC saying they were wrong. They stipulate to the dismissal after six years. Again, so I think this is why uh, these guys, they're into uh, uh, Lordstown here. I can find that Lordstown truck. And there you go. And guess what? They have the funding, funding secured, as long as the shareholders voted in. And who knows, maybe the SEC will try to throw the monkey wrench in this. But we have an ongoing, see, this guy's been through an SEC investigation. I'm sure he's gone through the details on all of this. He could see that there's no, there's no there there. He's plowing his cash into it. He's getting in early. So anyway, I think this is great for Lordstown. I hope you guys liked the video. I'm going to put a close on this, but this is the latest. Now, this is the research I did today as fast as I could to get to the bottom of this. I am assuming this is all correct. I am confident it is all correct. Do your own due diligence. I am not a, uh, a financial advisor, okay? But I think this is uh, really great news. Um, very good news for Lordstown. And I think now there is no doubt that this truck will get out in September. And I'm going to say it right now. This is, as Steve Burns said, going to be the first full-size electric pickup truck ever manufactured. Okay? So, bully, bully. <laughs> Good job, Lordstown. Great deal. That uh, temporary CEO, she's all right. Also, I don't know, I think Steve Burns may have had a lot to do with this too. But anyway, good job. That's the video. Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody. I hope you liked that uh, video. I'm not a financial advisor. And uh, I think this is very bullish for Lordstown. I think they're going to be the first pickup truck. I hope you liked the video. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, do not take this as financial advice and do your own DD. I think I did a complete report here, but you just never know. So thanks, guys, uh, for watching. I appreciate it.